Hey guys, welcome to episode 9 of Weapons Grade Extras. Today we're going to be talking about our unexpected treasures. Now unexpected treasures might be a little bit of a strong statement, but these are going to be games that we went into not expecting to necessarily like them that much, and we ended up liking them. They may not be like our favorite games of all time, but we do like these games. Uh, Sarah's going to start us off here with the first one. Yeah, the first one I'm going to mention today is Guillotine. When I first saw the box, I was kind of like, alright, and then you open it and then there's like this dinky little cardboard guillotine stand thing and I'm thinking, oh, this is going to be the longest, quickest game of my life. <laughs> but you start to play it and you start to read the, the flavor text and see all the fun little cartoons and all of a sudden I was just like, you know what? I kind of like this game. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, so now it, it's actually kind of one of my favorites, like in between easy games, in between a couple of heavy games. Filler game. Yeah, yeah, it's like, it's good. Yeah, there's, <laughs> not, there's not really a ton to say about Guillotine. It's a really fun, light game. Uh, we got It's one of our many, many uh, half price acquisitions that we've gotten over the years. I, I have a really bad tendency of buying cheap games just because they're cheap and sometimes not ending up being the best or we don't get to play them that much, but Guillotine was, it was one I'd actually wanted, uh, I was looking forward to playing it, Sarah definitely was not on board, it seemed like a weird theme, so uh, it's a really fun light game, if you have a chance to get it full price even, it's really, it's really fun, so uh, Richard Garfield, again, an older design from him, I believe it's Richard Garfield, it was Wizards of the Coast at least, uh, back when they made really cool games, so yeah, it was a really good one. My, yes, it's a little roll. Yeah, it's, oh god, uh, we're leaving that in. Okay, so my, my, my two, we're, we're going to keep the list a little bit shorter, we're going to talk a little bit more about the specific games, but uh, my two are kind of a theme in mind, it's going to be uh, properties, like IPs, they're based off of video games specifically, and my first one, conveniently located over here, is Doom, the board game. Uh, Doom the board game, uh, following the same theme actually of buying things cheap just because they're cheap. I got this on a, online during one of the flash sales, I think back when Tanga sold a lot of decent board games. I got this for like uh, 20, 30 bucks or something like that, so I said, hey, I'll, I'll check it out. I heard, you know, it's a fantasy flight game, had a lot of minis and stuff, I didn't know much about the gameplay. And at the time I hadn't actually played Descent yet, so I didn't know this was a dungeon crawling game for the most part. I just knew it was based on the video game. I, I'm not a huge fan of Doom, I like Doom okay. Uh, but it, it's not like something I was running, you know, I had to get Doom the board game because of Doom. Uh, and actually, I uh, I didn't play it for a really long time. It was kind of just a big, heavy box. I looked at the miniatures like, oh, it's cool, but I don't know if I'll ever get to play it. Played Descent, and then I thought about it for a second. I'm like, that looks a lot like Doom. And I went and played Doom, and I was like, I like Doom a lot. Doom is really fun. It's uh, uh, I think it's actually a little more tense than Descent for us because you have ammunition, and if you run out of ammo, you're screwed and I think this is a lot harder than Descent uh, because you're you're just one or the Marines themselves are not like heroes in Descent. In Descent you feel really strong and in Doom you feel really weak until you get like the BFG or something like that so uh, Doom was a big surprise for me. I know you know now um, TV and movie themed uh, games aren't as bad as they once were. Didn't have this, they don't have the same reputation. Like we've had things like Firefly, the game people really like, uh, Battlestar Galactica, people like uh, Spartacus, even people really liked, which was uh, really surprising to me. But you know, there's been like properties that have made good games now, and this kind of came out before that. And I think it's one people might have passed up. And I found it really fun. It's a really fun dungeon crawling game. It's a dungeon crawl, but it's not a dungeon. <laughs> So that's Doom. Yeah, um... I think I was calling it Doom for a second. Doom. <laughs> With an M. Doom. Um, my next one I'm going to mention here is, um, Roadkill Rally. Now, when, um, when I first saw it, my first impression was like, oh, that car is going to hit that little old lady on the cover. I don't like that. <laughs> and so, um... And then Hunter was like, oh yeah, in this game you have to run people over. And I'm like, oh, I don't know how I feel about running people over. <laughs> I try to avoid that, really. And so, played it, and then the more people I hit, the more I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, maybe this made me feel like a little bit of a bad person inside. But you know what? It's okay. <laughs> like, there's um, 
what I like, a little blood splatters all over the place, and it's kind of like, you know when you're in the car and you joke about like, oh, little old lady 10 points. Well, guess what? <laughs> this is like really being those, those little comments that you make in the car that you don't aren't really supposed to, I guess. <laughs> yeah. This was another, uh, I bought this one on a Tanga sale, and I didn't know much about it. I, I actually am a big fan of the movie Death Race uh, 2000 from back in the day, and not necessarily the remake, but the one with Sylvester Sloan and Carity and all those guys. And this is essentially that movie in board game form. The artwork doesn't do the game a lot of, a lot of good, I think. It's a little weak. Uh, the cards, it looks a little cheap, honestly, but the gameplay, it's just fun. You're just running to people over. You, obviously, this is not a game for everyone. The theme is going to turn a lot of people off. Uh, but for us, it's just enough blood sport for us to have fun with. So, yeah, yeah Roku is a lot of fun. Uh, my next one is another video game theme one. Not one I've gotten to play as much, but this one was just so surprising to me that I had to put it on the list. And that is Uncharted the board game. Uh, Uncharted... It's weird. I have no attachment to Uncharted the video game at all. I don't have a PS3. I'm assuming when I, I'm eventually going to get a PS3 when it, I find one really, really cheap. That's how I do things. I, obviously, I find things on discount. I bought this for like $6 at a Ross. I was just at a Ross looking for, uh, not for clothes. I, I, I sometimes hunt for uh, toys and things like that at, at places like that that are on really deep discount. Found it for like 6 bucks. I was like, I can't pass up a $6 game. It looks like crap, but I'll, I'll buy it. Whatever. And this game is not crap. This is actually a really interesting little game. It, it's kind of, it, it's weird. It's kind of like a deck building game, but not a deck building game. And each of the characters you pick is unique. Uh, you have a different skill set for each character, plus you're fighting bad guys. It's definitely a deck building game. I, should, I shouldn't say it's not a deck building game, but you're, you're kind of getting cards and buying, tre getting treasures, but also fighting guys that are trying to kill you for treasures. Kind of like a card game version of Indiana Jones. Uh, it really captures the theme of a treasure hunt very well. Uh, one I, should, I really want to break out a little bit more. Uh, the rules aren't very difficult at all. Uh, it plays really quickly. It's probably it's under an hour for sure. Uh, but yeah, Uncharted the board game. If you can find this for a good price, uh, I don't know if I'd pay. I think it's like 30 or 40 MSRP. So I don't know if I'd pay that much for it. But uh, online or something, if, and especially if you're a fan of, the, uh, of Uncharted itself. It does, and again, it uses video game graphics, uh, kind of like Doom does. Uh, so it may not be the most attractive game. It's, it's just a lot of fun, though. I, I, I really enjoy it. I enjoy this one. Uh, I just had one honorable mention for this week, and that was the silliest game I've ever played called Smiley Face. Um, now, I think I liked it because we got it on sale. I probably would have never paid for full price for the game. Um, and when we were reading the rules, I was like, I can't believe I'm about to play this. <laughs> but after we played it, I was like, hey, you know what? That was kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, Smiley Face, I, I got that one on a really deep, like $4. I got that again for like 4 bucks, really. And it, uh, I again, I'm not going to pass the game up for 4 bucks. The, the reason these games are on our list more than a lot of our full price games is because usually if we're going to buy something full price, we're going to... You're, we're going to research it quite a bit, so we're going to know what we're getting into. If it's a really deep discount, you, sometimes I'll just pull the trigger and we'll get it. And... You know, if it, if it bombs, I didn't spend a lot. If it's good, I, you know, it made the list pretty much. And, and we have a lot of good ones, but some of them I go into thinking that are going to be good. Uh, my honorable mention is going to be on the comments, our customer comments this week. So uh, let's go into those. Uh, these all came from Twitter this week. Uh, we didn't have any Facebook comments. And we actually were worried we weren't going to get any co comments this week. But you guys came through at the last second and got us a ton of, uh, a ton of uh, interesting ones. A lot of games on here I actually want to try now. Uh, Philip, who couldn't be here, he is on uh, vacation. Is uh, he? He his contribution was one of mine, which is Nuns on the Run. Uh, Nuns on the Run. Uh, Sarah got me that for Christmas a few years ago. It's been a few years now, I guess. It's been quite a few years. Four or five years now. Yeah. And uh, it's you essentially you play as uh, not nuns. You play as what are they called? Pri not Prioress. I can't remember what it's called. It, you're just playing as a student, <laughs> running around, a, running around a, a church essentially, or, or a monastery, and the nuns are running around trying to catch you. And one person plays as the nuns. It's a secret movement game, uh, very akin to something like Letters from Whitechapel or something along those lines. And the theme really turned me off. I was like, "Why did you get me this?" And we didn't play it for a really long time because it the was theme over, was over a year. It just, it sat, just on sat on the shelf. It really did, and I ended up liking it a lot more. Now I, I kind of tend to go for other games like Scotland Yard or something like that with Secret Movement just because the theme is more attractive to me. 
But it's still, I, I like the game in spite of its theme for sure. The other one he mentioned, it says, is Isla Dorada, which is another one that I got on discount. Uh, a Fun Forge game. Fun Forge uh, does Takedo, uh, and both those games look impeccable uh, for different reasons. Takedo is very minimalist. Isla Dorada is very, like, uh, cartoony, but beautiful art. And the game itself, I got I got another huge discount on that. It was like $18 on min Miniature Market, so I had to get it. And the gameplay is super unique. I've never played a game like that. I, I thought I was going to be good from the beginning. That's why I didn't make my list. But these two, Sarah and Philip, both were not sure on that one. And it's really cool. Everyone controls the same playing piece and trying to trying to meet their own goal while other people trying to block you without you know letting you know what their goal is. So uh, that was really interesting. And we have some other guys. Uh, Jennifer, who uh, commented, uh, Space Alert was one of hers. And Space Alert, Sarah hasn't played this one. I haven't played it myself, but I know I know a decent amount about it. It's actually a programmed movement game, kind of like Robo Rally. I love Robo Rally. Uh, yeah, and I've wanted to play it quite a bit. Not good at it. Not good at <laughs> Robo Rally, but, but I, I actually really like Robo Rally as well, and it's one uh, I've really wanted to play Space Alert. Uh, and it, it, it does look from the outset, you don't really know what it's about unless you, you've read up on it, so I can see how that could be one of those. Um, Benny Sperling, uh, he he says, uh, uh, game designer Benny Sperling, uh, Agricola, all creatures big and small, which is the two-player version of Agricola, which he says he doesn't actually like. Uh, I actually still haven't played that either, but it's one of our two-player games that I've been really, really wanting to get. It's been highly recommended by, well, obviously Benny here, Tiffany, a lot of other people that do reviews have really liked that game. We love two-player games, and it's one... That, it's one that uh, you're pretty much ma uh, breeding animals, the, the cool part of Agricola to me. Uh, we did uh, play Agricola, we weren't huge fans of it, that's probably what soured us on it a little bit. But, I've heard, this is like the third or fourth time I've heard that it's not, it's a, like people that don't like Agricola have liked all creatures big and small, so. Uh, it's definitely on the list. Uh, he also mentioned Trains, uh, which he didn't like, he didn't think he'd like because of the theme. Uh, Trains is a deck building game. Uh, where you you essentially it's like a deck builder with a board. You have a, you have stations and trains and stuff out there. Uh, that's when I really want to play. But I like the themes. So that, yeah. That's why I want to play it. it. It probably wouldn't make this list, but that's another good, uh, game that looks really good. Uh, Robin Lee's uh, Trajan. Uh, Trajan is an interesting one. I heard a lot about Trajan when it was coming out, and then it kind of fell off the face of the earth for me. It was one that just kind of came and went. Uh, but it seems really cool. Uh, from what I understand, it's got like it's like just a, a lot of different actions you can take. It's kind of got a. Uh, for I've read, heard Mancala in reference to this. I don't know what how, how that relates, but it looks pretty good. And uh, Rhiannon from uh, Spoony Meeples, uh, common battle beyond space. I didn't know what the hell she posted. I didn't know what this was, uh, and I had to look it up on Board Game Geek. And <laughs> I looked it up. And I still, I'm not 100% sure what it is. It, it's, it's like a diceless space combat, and based on everything else I've seen you play, or seen you post about Arena, I have no idea why this specifically appeals to you, but now I really want to check it out. So, thank you for that, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, lots of great comments this week, guys. We're really excited uh, for getting that kind of support, and we love doing this, this show because it's just kind of a, a side thing. It's something we have fun uh, just thinking up a topic and talking with you guys about it. So, uh for our next one, uh, in two weeks, we're going to do something very similar to this, except in this case we're going to do the most disappointing games, which uh, we'll probably have more on our lists, and I know people will probably have more to post about on this one. It's We don't usually do really negative topics, but yeah, there's just sometimes you're going to have a game where the cover looks amazing and you think the designer's great mm -hmm. and things like that, but uh, it just falls short, so... I'm not necessarily saying it's always a bad game, but maybe sometimes it's not great for our group. Or as good as you'd hoped. Or as good as you hoped when yeah. you really wanted it to be good. Yeah. Well, I've already got a few in mind for that, so yeah, <laughs> that, me too. Be good. I think we'll, we'll, we'll have to pare that list down a bit, honestly. So, guys, thank you so much for commenting. Uh, like I said, we have a lot of fun doing these little episodes and filtering through you guys' stuff. Uh, so, if you have any comments on this uh, topic, leave them below. We read all the comments, and we definitely like hearing, even if we're not putting it in the episode, we definitely like hearing what you think are some, you know, games that you thought might might not be good and ended up being great. And you can comment for the next topic as well. If you leave a comment about our next episode, we'll pull from the YouTube comments here or at WG Tabletop on Twitter and uh, Weapons Grade Channel. We'll post that on Facebook as well at uh, Facebook slash uh, Weapons Grade Channel. Uh, so yeah, it, it's uh, it's really fun doing these videos. So uh, definitely, you know, thank you guys for contributing. This has been a lot of fun. 
Uh, so that'll be episode 10 next time. Awesome, we're already to 10, double digits. Uh, so guys, uh, Sarah, do you have any last words? I'll put her on the spot again. I do have some last words. Oh, sweet. Words. <laughs> you are an unexpected treasure. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, guys. I'll see you guys next time on Weapons Great Extra. See you next time in the game room.